So when it says, ye rich men, weep and harp for your mysteries as a come upon you, it's referring to those rich people, those rich Jews or Christians who have put money before God. And many of us claim that we love God, we do this, we do that, but in reality, our true love is in our riches. Many people come to church, the aim is to do business, and if they get a call, oh, someone wants to immediately leave the church. They don't even think twice. They go on with that home because that money they want is more important than God's presence in their lives. See, most of us are guilty of this. Say so your riches are corrupted and your garments are not it. What's it referring to? It is referring to your spiritual states. When money is the main issue in your life, they will corrupt you and your garments to God. When he looks at you, they are more eating, meaning that they have holes in them. So that garment you're wearing, if you're a rich person whose focus is only on money to God, your garments are more eaten. They're not complete. Because that money is because it was first Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six, verses six to ten. See, it's not that wealth is bad, it's the love of that world that drives people to do things they should really do and sin against God. First Timothy chapter six. Yeah, first Timothy six. Six to ten. Yes. Now godliness with contentment. Godliness with contentment. Let's start with that. For we brought nothing into this world. Yes. And it is certain Mm -hmm. we can carry nothing out. That says. And having food Mm -hmm. and clothing, Mm -hmm. with these we shall be content. That is it. Verse 9. But those who desire to be rich Uh fall into temptation and its net. Yes. And into many foolish and harmful loves, Uh which drown men in destruction and perdition. That is it. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. That is it. For which some of some have strayed from the faith mm-hmm. in their goodness and prized themselves through with many, many sorrows. sorrows. So godliness with contentment is a great gain. That means if you lead a godly life, whatever God has given you, you are contented with that. That's enough. That's what he's telling you. You don't have to aspire to be like your neighbor, say the grass is always green on the other side. Or your brother or your uncle. Oh, they just bought a house, I have to buy the same house. They just bought a new car, I have to. No, you should be content. Actually, it's covetousness. When you seek to have what others have, the Bible says that a man can only have what God gives them. But most of us are not satisfied with that. No, no, no. We want to have more than what God has given us. Oh, after all, brother, so so I did this, did, did this business, and now it's a millionaire. Let me do the same thing. You don't know what he did to get that. And foolishly, you go and do the same thing and you end up with zero. You don't know how many cars it belongs to to have that house where the Jeep is right. They won't tell you. You think anybody will, nobody will advertise that I'm a car member, I belong to this. No, nobody will do that. But you see them writing big Jeeps, building houses, mansions, like all these things. You say, oh, what business is he doing? Ah, let me go and do the same business. <laughs> You're not going to get the same results. Because there's something behind that wealth that you don't know. See, godliness and contentment, they literally have. In fact, it follows by saying that having food and clothing, let us be content. Well, because we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we'll take nothing out. Have you ever seen people burying their relatives with Rolls Royces? I've seen it. In fact, some cultures, they bury people, things with servants, alive. With the foolish notion that they will serve them where they are going. You know? I once saw a video about three years ago in sorry, Thailand, somewhere in Thailand, in East Asia anyway, where they buried the wife of this man that died. She was buried her life with her husband because they felt that she had to take care of the husband on the journey when she was going to the husband. And they actually videoed there's a throwing sand upon this woman. I was shocked. That was in their culture. The wife was very alive with the husband. You know how foolish, how ignorant people can be. You see, we brought nothing to this world. It's certain we encourage all this money you're making, all these hours you're working. The minute you leave this earth, you will leave them here. You don't take a penny with you. So why kill yourself? That's what it meant that we, with uh, food and clothing, let's be content. Because every other thing is extra. 
Hmm? You want this, you have that house, you have this, uh, well, you can have it, but know that for sure, the minute you leave this land, and everybody is going to leave this land, nobody is going to stay here forever. So all those things will now pass on to people who didn't work for them. And you know what? They use one way of money. So good, because they didn't work for it, they just spent for it. They don't value the money. You don't spend all the hours of the day working night and day. No, they, they don't have the value of the money. As long as they get it, it's under it. So what's the point? So this is teaching that we must take our eyes off the things of this world. It's not that you shouldn't have money. Don't let that money be the driving force of your life. Be contented with the little you have. Said, having full and full content, but they that will be rich, see, that's what's referring to. Those that want to be by all this, oh, I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30 years old, by the time I'm 40 years of age, I want to have this, I want to have that. Ask yourself, that thing you want to have, how would it improve the chances of going to hell? I mean, people are praying for this. Oh, God, I want to have this Jeep. Why? To compete in the neighbors. That's why you want to have that Jeep. Oh, I want to have this house. Why? So I can show off. Me, I also have a house on a lecky, on a beach island. Not to serve God. Not to bring people to church. Not to save souls. It's to show off. You think God's going to answer that prayer? No. <laughs> if you say, God, if you give me a car today, I'm going to be bringing people to your church every Sunday. You'll be amazed at how quickly you get that car. Because you are using that car to do God's purpose. To bring people to his church. That is the kind of prayer you need to be praying, not God give me this, give me that. God says, if I give it to you, then I know you. You won't come to church again. <laughs> it's true. God knows that we know ourselves. If you have that money, that job, whatever, you will not come to church again. And so God says, no, I'm not going to give it to you until you get closer to me. You know who I am. So that's why many prayers are delayed. But God sees that motivation. That motivation is wrong. Job 13:28. They that be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Oh, let's do that contract. No one will share the money. Oh, yes. If they won't tell you at the end that you're going to end up in jail. Job 1028. Yes. Man decays like mm-hmm. a rotting thing, mm-hmm. like a garment mm-hmm. that is moth eating. That is it. That is the decay of those who love riches. That's how God sees them. Their garments are decayed. Romans 2 verse 5. Romans 2 verse 5. But after that, thy hardness yes. and impertinence, impertinence and heart, heart mm-hmm. assurance, mm-hmm. upon, upon thyself, mm-hmm. wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Six. That's keeping treasure for the last days. Oh, I have this house. Some people, the kind of money they have, even if they were to give everybody on this app, let's say like a million dollars, they will not be able to spend it all. It's true. Bezos, who owns uh, Amazon, he has uh, 60, 100 or something billion dollars. I mean, how many human beings are this app? 5 billion, 6 billion maximum. So if you give everybody 1 million, you will not even spend this money, you will not exhaust this money. If you give every human being on earth one million dollars, you will not exhaust Bezos that money. So, what kind of money? What do you do with it? And how do you manage it? But those people who have that kind of money, they're very greedy. They don't like to give money out. In fact, the, the biggest givers are the poor and middle income group people. The rich people hardly give money. If they don't give money, their name must be published. Involved <laughs> in the news, especially announcements, you know, for them to give you that money, you better make sure you, you, you put that name there. Otherwise, they won't give you money. But the poor people are the ones that give more. Look at that widow, the widow's mighty in the book of Luke, when Jesus referred to. Mm-hmm. All the rich people are going, dropping their thousands, and this poor woman just took it with mice, two cents. Jesus said she gave more than all of them because she gave all that she had. So, we are being taught, we are being told here that we must be careful with money. So they that will rich, be rich fall into temptation and snare into many foolish and awful lusts. Oh, 
let me join them. Let me do this. How did he make it? Oh, let me show you. I watched a video on YouTube of a, a man in this church who had problems in the church and was told, oh, don't worry, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll settle you. They didn't tell him the details. And anyway, he agreed. He said, you have to bring somebody from your church. I don't know, maybe some of you have seen the video. And this man, he was a pastor of the church. He actually donated one member. Uh, this person was a very close person to her. Now, the shocking part was that in the night, the people came wearing black and red. Next thing, they, they had gone to that woman's house because she had donated her, captured this poor woman, brought her to the church, in his presence, caught her head. I'm sure many of you have seen that video. <laughs> the man said he was shaking. What? This is not what. I know, no, it's too late. And they said, You're the one that said you wanted help, right? Right in the church, they caught up that woman's head, took the blood, and they buried her inside the church. Cut a long story short, he was found out. Then he confessed. He said he didn't know that he to do that. But you are the one that went to them, the first place. If you are contented with what we gave you, you will not have gone to seek help from somewhere else. Because you're not contented, that's why you go in that trouble. See? The godliness and contentment is great gain. But we brought nothing into this war, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. If you ever become rich, let me tell you the secrets. You must use that rich, those riches to help other people. That's the only way to guarantee your way to heaven. The more God blesses you, the more you bless other people. Then you are building for yourself treasure in heaven. But if you keep on hoarding the money, and saying, I'm going to do this for this, keep this for this. Some people are already building houses for their great great grandchildren. Why? You get to be born. They say, Oh, I'm going to build a house. Why? You know, he has not even born yet. You're already building a house for them. You know? When God blesses us, He's supposed to be a blessing to other people. Then we can ensure where we're going. It's not for us to hold the money or to be miserly. No. Remember that all that money you have. You're not going to take it to me. So, my as well use bless people. There are people that have needs, especially in their home country. Hmm? Use it to bless them. And as you're doing that, you are building for yourself a treasure, a, a mansion in heaven. That's what you're doing. So, he said, Behold the hire, you have hid treasure together for the last days. Behold the hire, I mean the wages of the laborers who have ripped down your fields, the wages of you kept back by fraud, cried. We know in Nigeria people they don't pay salaries for months, even the government. Some people a year. I once had a cousin who wasn't paid for about three years. And they kept on going to the office. How is that fair? People are working and you're not paying their salaries. The cry and the cries of them which have ripped and entered the ears of the Lord of Silver. This is very common. Many employers. They have the money, they don't pay their workers in time. They use that money to do business, to make interest, whatever, and after a few months, they finally pay them. By that time, people are going to borrow money, there's nothing left. This is very, very grievous before God because if they cry to God, God will surely hear the prayer and judge that person. Leviticus 19 13. Deuteronomy 24 15. Leviticus 13 19. Deuteronomy 24 15. Deuteronomy 24 15. Yes. At each day mm -hmm. you shall give him his wages mm -hmm. and not let the sun go down on it for his poor mm -hmm. and has set his heart on it. Thus he cried out uh -huh. against you uh -huh. and the Lord. You see? And it be said to you. See, you see? In other words, if somebody works for you, it doesn't matter. Whether you have the money or not, how you promise them, you must give them the money. Leviticus 19:30. Yes. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither mm -hmm. The wages of him that is tired shall not be, shall not arrive with thee all night until the morning. You see, that means you can't even say come back tomorrow. No, that same day you must pay your workers. Because if you don't pay them, 
and they kneel down and cry to God against you, believe me, the judgment will come upon you. Because God does not like any form of cheating, especially people who have worked for him. And we know nowadays people do contracts for people who don't get paid. They give them excuses. Oh, there is no money. There's no money, but he's already done the work for you. He's already done the contract. It doesn't mean there's no money. What do you mean by that? If he's already done the work, it doesn't matter. If you have to borrow it, you must pay that person. Speedily too. He says, don't let it sit in your house that night. Don't let that money remain with you overnight. If you do, it becomes a curse. You see? These are serious principles that many people have violated and they wonder why their life is a mess. Well, when you had the opportunity, you, you cheated your workers. You didn't give them the due means at the right time. And they cried to God against you. That's why your business fails today. Because God sends his judgment against your business because you didn't pay them. Or maybe you didn't pay them. Well, say, oh, they're supposed to pay them 5,000 naira. Say, oh, sorry, there's only 2,000 naira available. But well, the man walked for 5,000. And you gave it to the, come back next month. Next month, oh, sorry, there's no problem. These are the excuses people give. It's a sin against God. You know, if I call yourself a Christian, and many of you are doing this in your business, you are really sinning against God, and God's judgment will come upon you unless you repent. You must not cheat anybody that wages. If you are employed people to do a business for you, and the business doesn't sell or whatever, that's your own problem. If you made a covenant with these people, you're going to pay them. Even if you have to borrow money. Say, oh, I've already made a contract with them, I'm going to pay them 5,000, 10,000 naira. Well, the business didn't sell, nobody came to buy, it doesn't matter. I still have to pay them. And on time. Don't let that money be in your pocket overnight. If it does, that money has become a cancer, it will destroy you. It's going to pray against you. See, this is practical Christianity, you have to go down to the roots. Many people pretend to be all this Christianity, they are doing all this stuff, but in their private lives, their personal lives, they are doing all these evil things. Hmm? And you could be a man or one of God and the other in the church, but in your business, you are depriving your workers of their middle salary. You are not paying them, and you are getting fat on their own luck. You are using their money to do business, get interest, sell them there is no money, have to come back five months, six months, and we pay them. Serious sin against God. Serious sin. Don't do that. Say so you have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanton and is fat. You have nourished your hearts as the day of slaughter. That was all the wealth. All these things they're doing is only going to lead to destruction. Remember the story of the rich man. Man, the Bible says that they had a party. Look, they had a party every day. Mm-hmm. Every day, there was no day in every party. And he had a beggar at the gates. And he didn't care about the beggar. Of course, that's what they expect from people. He didn't say, oh, send some food to that beggar. I mean, I see him there every day. Or let him come and say, let us treat it. No. He let the beggar outside. Every day, people will come, have a party, and go. That man was so poor that even the dogs had to lick his wounds. Well, we know the end. The rich man died. The Bible says he went down to hell. Hell is the middle of this earth. He went down to hell. And, the, the, and this poor beggar was taken up to heaven. Paradise. Because he did not, he did not use his money as he ought to. There's another story of a farmer in the Bible who had a huge harvest. Sorry? Not yeah, not not no. This is the New Testament. This man had a big harvest. The Bible says that at the end, he said, Oh, so what am I going to do with this harvest of mine? Mm. And you know what his spirit told him? He said, Oh, eat and be merry and enjoy yourself. Mm. And that's correct. God told him, look, this time tomorrow your soul will be proud of you. And what are you going to do with all that harvest you have? The Bible says that because he did not use his wealth to honor God, they took his soul. That was the end of it. All his wealth. So all his wealth, somebody else, some other people enjoyed it. Because he wasn't planning. He didn't say, ah, 
This what I'm going to give you to charities. I'm going to give you to orphanages. I'm going to give you to poor. I'm going to give money. No, 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 no. It was holidays. That's what those people use it for. Actually, you know, when God blesses you, you are actually like a vessel, like a tube, or a channel to bless others. The money should go through you to reach them, not you keeping it. The story of the, the owner of Walmart, the original owner, he was supposed to pay a tenth of his income. And you know, he paid 90% of the money that came to him. He only kept 10%. And the more he gave to charity, the more God blessed him. And he gave 90%, not 10% to God. 90, he kept only 10. His wealth was in billions. So give as it be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together. But men give to your poor time. See? The cries of them which have reaped high until the ears of Sabbath. So you have nourished your hearts the day of slaughter, getting ready for the slaughter. That's the destruction. You have condemned and killed the just, and you have not resist you because of your power. How many people are oppressed because they have nobody to defend them? Or they take their lands. You see that property, say, what? Who are you? You, you can't face me. I mean, <laughs> what one do you have? Just, you know, there's this man, Jibai, uh, I don't know whether many you, you heard about him, how he killed a man. And he thought he could use his wealth to bribe the authorities. But he was shot because Jibai was convicted. It was a very popular socialist in Lagos. Lots of money. He would take people's land by force. Nobody would complain against him because he had all the commissions of police, all the judges were in his pockets. Well, this one he did. That was his last time. And eventually they hanged him. He took the case to the Supreme Court. He walk. Sentenced him to death. So you are condemned and kill the just, and they don't know resist you. Now, all this was said the background of this passage. He talks of wealth, getting rich, the consequences of it. Now he says, be patient therefore, brethren. Why? Because most of us are not patient. We want our wealth back as of yesterday. God, give me one million dollars today or else I'm not going to go to a church again. Most of us are like that. We are not patient. To wait for our time before God. And this is where many people go to do money ritual. They sacrifice their father, mother, wife, son, name it. Oh, just bring your son, your firstborn son. Then you have so many good houses. A man was caught in the early hours of the morning in Lagos a few years ago carrying a huge bag. And said, what are you doing with this huge bag? The wife had to get it inside the bag. It was hot red handed. His own wife, actually, the wife was pregnant. He had killed her for going to use her for money ritual. See, because they are not patients. They want it right now. Hmm, ha, ah, my friend is this, my friend is that, I have to have the same thing. No, no, no. You did not come on to the earth at the same time. Each person should be in their own lane. So be patient there for prayer until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he receives the early and later rain. Meaning that the farmer doesn't sow corn today and goes there and says, Ah, corn, why are you not growing? Ah, look, I have sowed yesterday. Come on. No, he doesn't. He waits. If you're sowing, you have to wait for the seed to germinate and grow. It doesn't happen overnight. And many people are like, I'm patient. Oh, I've been paying my cards for so many years. I've been sowing. <laughs> you're going to give it time. You don't sow something today, expect to harvest today. You're going to give it time. You're going to be patient. If you're not patient, you cannot walk with God because God doesn't walk according to his time. He has his own, his own seasons, like those things. You think, ah, God, I've been praying for this for so many months. You haven't answered me. Why not get angry at God? 
is because you don't know God. It doesn't work according to your own timetable. And in fact, the truth is that if God was asking many of our prayers, many of us would have been distracted long before now. It's like you're giving a child is asking, praying to God for a car that he not drive. Right? Suppose God was to give that car to that young boy. He would kill himself. Right? So God will not answer that prayer. And many of our prayers like that. We are praying for things that one, we can't handle. Two, the wrong motive for it. That's what the book of James says. So you ask amiss. You are not asking for the right reason. That's why you're not getting your answers. Hmm? Yes? Book of James chapter 4. Is that what it says? Yeah? We ask for the wrong reasons. James chapter 4. What? Yeah. Verse 1, you can read this. Say, so from whence come wars and fights among you? Come they not hence, even of your loss that were your members, you lost and have not. Mm-hmm. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your loss. Ah, you see that man's praying money, dollars, the party. You want to be like him. I've not seen people in Nigeria, yeah, they take money in buckets. And they go on the street and they just take the money out and spray it on the streets as they're driving along. Millions of naira, they just spray it in the air. And people are rushing to get it. I said, I want to be like that man. <laughs> you don't really know what's behind that money. Hmm? You are asking because of your lusts. You are daughters and adulteresses. Know you know that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world. Is the enemy of God. See? You want to be a friend of the world. You have to want to have all this money, all these riches. You don't think about God. Because God wants you to have that money. That money you're going to get, how would it improve the case to heaven? Would it take you from heaven? Many people have sold their souls. So Satan says, Oh, you want money, I'll give you money. You want faith, I'll give it to you. Want everybody to know you? Yes, we'll do it for you. Or just send these contracts. Sign this. Sign your soul to me. Meaning that I now own your soul. Hmm? You have the success quite all right. You have the fame. But at the end, Satan will be in charge of you. And the day you die, <laughs> that's when you know the reality of the truth. That is, you've been sold in the body of lies. So be also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Dwell there. Don't be in a hurry with God. When you, especially when you pray. Know for sure that God hears your prayers and He will answer at His own time, not according to your own time. Now, you might be thinking that, oh, God is late. God is not late. No. He knows the best time to answer your prayers. See, you are a human being. You don't know the future. You don't know what's going on five years from today. God knows it. He knows what happened 1,000 years from today. You already know it. You don't know that. So, you're praying to God to answer your prayer in time. It's very foolish because not the time will happen. In the next, in fact, the next two days you don't know how. Talk to yourself about the next year. Mm-hmm. And you're praying to God who knows everything. Therefore, give me a chance to answer you at the right time. Grudge not one against another brother unless you be condemned. See, my brother, my brother, we feel the same class at university. Look at him today. Eh? He's a millionaire. Everybody sing his praises. And we're in the same school. See, you begin to grudge your fellow brother. God has not given you the money. That's all. As long as you eat, that's why you see that's fine. Why grudge one another? Say, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge stands for stands for the law. Says, take my brother, the prophets who have spoken the name of the law, for an example of suffering affliction. Now, the image of prophets today is somebody riding a big jeep with people. <coughs> Security men on the on sites, walking to church with red carpets, flying in a helicopter or a jet. That is the image you have today of prophets and overseers. This is not, repeat, this is not the image of the prophet of God. So 
the thing I bring up, the prophets have spoken in the name of the Lord, for example, of suffering, affliction, and of patience. And he gives an example, so we count them happy, which endure. We have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tenderness. Job was God, in God himself disguised as a perfect man. Is the only person in the Bible that God describes like that. So have you seen Job as a perfect? That's what God said about him. Can you imagine? But who suffered most? Even though he was perfect, who suffered most in the Bible? There is nobody that suffered like Job. But God described him as perfect before him. But I'm trying to tell you, there's a lesson in enduring. Because at the end of Job's when God finished with Job, he gave him double what he had lost. He gave him a very long life. He restored all his wealth. Because Job endured. Many of us cannot endure. Psalm 94 verse 12. Job 2 10. Job 42 verse 10. Matthew 5 12. Speaking of endurance. Patient endurance. And the prophets, the apostles are all killed different ways. Just name any prophets, horrible deaths. Matthew 5 verse 12. Matthew 5 12, yes. Verse 12. Yes. Rejoice mm -hmm. and be exceedingly glad. Mm -hmm. For great is your reward in heaven. Sorry, read the previous verse so that we have a context. For so they persecuted the prophets. Okay, go, go to 10. Go to 10. Matthew 5 10. Blessed are those. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. right, yes. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Go on. Blessed are ye, mm -hmm. are you when they revile and persecute you, uh -huh. and say all kinds of evil against you. Yes. For my sake. Mm -hmm. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Yes. For great is your reward in heaven. Mm -hmm. For so they persecuted the prophets That's who were for you. That's it. So so they persecuted the prophets who were for you. All the prophets suffered terrible affliction. Yet they did not stop the work of God. So if you are worried about suffering, you are not ready to do the work of God. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you know what a disciple is? A disciple is somebody who patterns their life after their mentor. That means if your mentor went through trials, you have to go through. That's what the disciple is. So because of the disciple of Jesus Christ, you better expect affliction. He was afflicted. He was rejected by men. So I'm he was familiar with grief. And he carried our sorrows. So don't think you can be a disciple and apostle and be exempt. This idea of seeing apostles living this luxurious life is not the Bible image of apostles. Apostles are supposed to be the most suffering most. Mm. So, now Psalm 94 verse 12, Job 2 10, Job 42 10. Joyful are those uh -huh. who do good things. Yes. Lord, those we teach with your instruction. Yes. You give them relief from troubled times. Mm -hmm. Also, you teach this dog for the wicked. That is it. See? Those who discipline, you save them from the peace of the wicked. So if you don't want affliction, if you don't want correction, well, <laughs> they're going to run into problems. He's saying all this because he's saying you should be patient. And part of the patience is waiting on God. And if you're waiting, so those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, you shall run and be weary, you shall walk and be faint. In waiting, God is teaching you the lesson, He's refining you. Is making you more like the Son Jesus Christ. Don't despise the chasing of the Lord. For whom the Lord loveth, he chases and scourges the Son whom he loves. Job 2 verse 10. Job 42 verse 10. Job 2 verse 10. Job 42 verse 10. What was your response to the friends of Job? Yes. I thought I prayed for his friends. Mm -hmm. What did you give to Job? Twice. Yes. Okay. Job 2 verse 10. Job 52 verse 10. Okay. 
do que do que você fez. For he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women, speaketh, let's start from verse 9. He said, Then his wife said to him, that is Job's wife, Does thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. That was after he had lost ten children and everything. Then he, Job said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, did not Job sin with his lips. Many of us only want to receive good from God. This is a perversion. If anybody tells you that because you're a Christian, you will not go to trial, that person is a liar. Tell him it's from me. No, 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 no. You cannot get to heaven without going through afflictions. Why? Because you are born in sin. And you are rebellious, prideful, just name it. You think you're going to enter heaven like that? No. All those bad characters have to be burnt away through the affliction you go through in life. See, that's why you have to go through the affliction. It's to refine you, it's to prepare you for the kingdom of heaven. Because the way you are, you cannot get there. Heaven is not a place for rich people or no, no, no. It's for humble people who are serving God in humility. So if you don't want affliction, you don't want God's correction, then you are saying, I don't want to go to heaven. Hmm? Those who have lives every day, feasting, partying, no issues, they are not going to ever get to heaven. There's no way. They are enjoying themselves on this side, that's it. Then they are enjoying themselves fully. Because that could be the end. No more. Once they die, it's judgment. But if you accept the judgment of God, the discipline of the Lord, and if you are patient with God, allow Him to refine you, then you can qualify for His paradise. Because by that time, all your hard faults will have been burnt away, washed away by the affliction you go through. See, it's good to be afflicted. That's what the King David said. He said, It was good that I was afflicted, that I may know thy law. I'm obedient to. Now, if you're watching me today and you are yet to surrender your life to Christ, this is another opportunity for you. Because once you take your last breath, you cannot get saved again. You cannot come back to this earth. There is no second chance. There is no appeal. All those that have died, they are not coming back. See? So you only have one chance. And this is the opportunity. You may not hear this message again. Take the opportunity to surrender your life to Christ. Don't say, I'm already good enough. I do this, I do that. No, no, no. Nobody is good. Good people don't go to heaven. No. It's got nothing to do with the goodness. Hmm? So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have sinned against God and man. And I'm not worthy to be called your son or daughter. Have mercy and forgive me my sins. Wash my sins away with your precious blood. Then come inside my hands and rule and reign over my life. I give you the keys to my life, the keys to my hands. Take to the authority. Now take my name from the book of the dead and write my name in the book of life. And I promise to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's it. She said that prayer meant it. God would deliver you, save you from your sins, from a new creation in a way to paradise. Let us pray to Jehovah. Jesus Christ, only my God, gracious and blessed Father, the God of all truth, the God of all mercy, once again, you've heard your word from heaven today. Let this word sink deep into our hearts. Let your truth set us free, because the word says you shall know the truth. Truth set you free. Deliver us from the deception of riches and the lusts, the love of money. Amen. Give us godliness with contentment because we know for certain that we brought nothing to this world and we shall take nothing with us. Thank you for saving our souls. 
in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 So tonight, read this passage again, the Holy Spirit minister to you, and thank God for your salvation. Is a miracle, walking down. Is the hour 